Hello. Global Banking and Finance Review is a leading brand name in the world of finance and banking. The Global Banking and Finance Review Awards were created in 2011 to recognize companies of all sizes that are prominent in particular areas of expertise and excellence within the global financial community. The awards reflect innovation, achievement, strategy, plus the progressive and inspirational changes taking place in the financial sector. Today's award winner is Euler Hermes, one of the world's leading providers of trade-related credit insurance solutions. Euler Hermes have offered over 100 years of client support and are backed by Alliance, one of the leading financial service providers worldwide. The company has experienced significant growth over the past two and a half years and grew by 38% in 2013. To tell us more about the reasons behind their success and to accept the award, we are pleased to welcome to London the CEO of Euler Hermes Gulf Corporation Countries, GCC, Massimo Falcioni, who is speaking with Phil Fothergill. Massimo Falcioni, welcome to London. Thank, Thank you. you for giving us some time to, to talk to you today. And indeed, uh, talking a little bit about uh, Eula Hermes and uh, your particular area, the GCC area, has been hugely successful. In fact, uh, I know that there has been a 13.8% growth uh, in, the, in the end of 2013, or by the end of 2013. What do you owe that success to? Well, firstly, I would like to thank uh, Global and Finance Review for this interview and the interest in Eula Hermes. The uh, success story of Eula Hermes in the Gulf starting 2006 and when we set up our first operations there. At that time uh, the goal of the company was mostly to serve three of our German customers doing business in the region. So they requested to have credit analysts and risk underwriters in place, which is the business model of Euler Hermes by the way. So we started in 2006 and the first goal was to set up the first operations and uh, another person joined the region, which was my predecessor, is Mr. Anil Berry, was very successful to set up a company and decide if there was an opportunity in the Gulf for TCI. He did a very good job. S of course, after that, so we saw that there was a potential market. What we have to develop later on was to connect the company to the market itself. And we did this to our employees. So starting really to leverage on their capability to be the ambassador of TCI in the market. So if I have to comment, uh, the story is long and the reason why we were so successful, we start from the employee engagement. Uh, this really made the difference. As you know, Euler Hermes as a credit insurer uh, doesn't have uh, a product, tangible product or a warehouse or a plant but the only asset we have is professionalism and knowledge and the people. So leveraging on the people, of course, there could be an opportunity for us to connect the Euler services to the market. And this is what we did in the last, I would say, also two years and a half. Of course, uh, also the strategy to uh, expand in the territory was very important. We put in place a multi-channel strategy so we distribute directly to the market through our fronting partners, which are eight in the region. But at the same time also, we are uh, heavily involved with the brokers and the banks, because all of the stakeholders in the market understand the importance of trickery insurance for the region in the moment. So I would say people, a multi-channel distribution strategy, and ultimately, I have to mention the third important success factor is the opportunity offered by GCC countries. The sound vision and leadership of the rulers of these countries really are creating a fertile environment to develop business. Uh, I'm very uh, privileged to live in one of the Emirates, which is Dubai, which is uh, uh, ruled by His Highness uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. And his vision is inspiring everybody living in such place. Uh, investing in education, partnering with all possible companies in every part of the world and making that becoming the most diverse, I would say, city and emirate in the world. Uh, we represent, for instance, in, with our team, 
26 different nationalities. And the reason why we are so diverse is because we interact within a country in which more than 140 nationalities are represented. So this incredible hub for trading, for doing business, is really so fertile to develop our business. It's interesting to hear you describe all of that and all those factors that went into actually making the success that you have been so far. So it's not only one thing, it's actually a series of events. Correct. So looking at, uh, at your clients and your customers, like uh, small to medium enterprise, but that's SMEs as they're known, uh, how do you go about supporting those sort of organizations to ensure that they're actually competitive within the market, both globally and locally? Yeah. One of the major challenges of SMEs in Middle East and Africa is access to finance. I would say that only 8% of the global funding from the banks to, uh, to the companies has been given to SMEs. And SME is a company which is very fragile, is below the turnover, is below 10 million US dollar. Of course, it's difficult for them to have the credit merit to get a lot of funding that they need to have to live in an area with such big expansion. So what we mostly do is to ease them to access to that. Firstly, we uh, help them to mitigate their trade risk. So we help SMEs to build a portfolio, a customer portfolio, everywhere in the world. We have a database of 42 million companies, monitored every day, and for which we can grant exposure and guarantees of payment. So this is something that we put at the service of our customers and of course of SMEs. At the second time also, we give them some guarantees which they can bring to the banks. And the policy and the limits granted by Yul Hermes have a strong goodwill from the banking network. Because Yul Hermes is a company rated double A minus standard poor. So when these SMEs go to the bank and ask for additional funding and they bring their receivables to be discounted and the banks look that these are backed by Yul Hermes, what they see is that the double A minus standard poor guarantee that we give on such kind of receivables. And of course, they are much more goodwill, much more infallible to give additional funding to SMEs. So we protect them from bad losses and at the same time we ease them to access the funding. And what sort of feedback do you get from those SMEs? Uh, bearing in mind what you've just described, the services you provide, what do they say? Well, firstly, uh, we try to be easy and accessible. Yul Hermes, uh, for instance, has just launched, thanks to uh, a really a big leader, which is our chairman, Wilfried Verstrade, the Yul Hermes 3.0 strategy, which means that we have to focus how to make our service more simple and accessible to the market. Well, an SME means that there is an entrepreneur is not a corporate and an entrepreneur is in charge, is involved in his operation, but of course his finance and risk management and credit management background might not be at the same level of all the business that is put in place. Secondly, to simplify the product, the, the service, the policy, to make easy access through our EOLIS uh, very advanced system to access to requests, to, uh, to the Yul Hermes credit limits, and in case of claims, easily communicate to us and immediately understand which are the characteristics of the coverage in order to avoid any, I would say, disappointment in the moments of truth. So we do this very, very easy and time to market for them. Uh, we try to simplify the process. As of today, SMEs represent 41% of my portfolio. So the appreciation from them and the high reta uh, uh, retention rate we have, which is above 90% on a yearly base, showed to me that we are trying to put our efforts and we are understood by them. But we have just started the beginning of talking with them. And we have to continue to do that. But it's obviously working very well at the moment. Isn't Thank it? you so much. What about um, some of the services you provide? I'd like to talk about uh, the difference between letter of credit uh, and, and, and how uh, those, those, the alternatives, and I know one is suggested as being better than the other. Tell me a bit more about those services. Yeah. As an entrepreneur, when I start doing business uh, at the beginning, I don't want to have 
many risks to manage and to threaten my business case. So I can start with cash payment or letter of credit. Now cash payment of course have absolutely no risk and but the, it reduces a little bit the competitiveness of companies and also the trust between the companies and its uh, buyers. As is, if there is a cash payment maybe the trust is not yet there. So, the second step of the development of a company is the letter of credit. Letter of credit means that a bank is guaranteed that. So, technically, there is still no risk for the enterprises, for the companies. However, there is a cost behind that, which goes in two ways. The cost applied by the bank of the letter of credit. Secondly, the time to instruct a letter of credit, which is transaction by transaction. So if I'm trading with you, for instance, and I'm doing six trades with you, I have to ins uh, instruct six times the letter credit from the bank. It takes some time to do that. And you know, time is business for our entrepreneurs. So the third move of development of SME is to become mid, large and big corporations is to trade on open account, open credit. But to have and to give an open credit, which is traditionally is an activity uh, given, done by a bank, you need to have a massive information and to have this kind of solvency reporting constantly updated. Now, it means that you have to have an infrastructure work in your company that is very costly. There is one way to make it in a very cost-effective way, which is the credit insurance. So credit insurance can grant limits on open credit, an open account. It's a revolving credit, so it means that once it's given by the credit insurance, is used due to all transactions, there's no need to inform how many transactions, it's up to the maximum limit granted, it's, it's possible to do transactions. It goes down, and when the, pay, the three receivables are paid, it goes up again, because it's revolving. So there's no headache for entrepreneurs to re-demand, re ask again to restruct for any other transaction with any financial institution. Let's go on to flexibility as well now and look ahead to uh, the rest of this year, 2014. What kind of plans do you actually have for, for your region uh, in the coming months? Good. Let me firstly start from something which is happening today. So let me start from the figures, the numbers where we are today. So this morning, our president, our chairman of the board of Euro Hermes Group, Wilfried Verstrade, just announced the first quarter results of the group. Let me comment on this. I just received, so I have to read this, mm -hmm. because I'm very remarkable. don't want to miss it. So Euro Hermes first quarter results show a solid start in 2014, which is vital for our expansion program in this year. Revenues are at 637.5 million euro, increasing 4% versus the first quarter of last year. Operating income increased by 20% at 170 million euro, and the net income is set at 82 million euro, which is an increase by 29%. So I would say we start very strong. And which were the main contribute of this? So still the president today declared that the growth markets like Americas, Asia and Middle East remains dynamic and drive most of the gro group's growth. So let me focus on the Middle East. I would say that this dynamic that we registered at the group level is granted, is confirmed in the Gulf countries as well. In fact, we grew up in the first quarter 16% versus the end of last year, our portfolio growth. So technically, if we will continue like this, we will show uh, more than 45% growth for this year. Uh, I would cannot commit on that. <laughs> I will commit on what we just registered so far. So, so I would say that this growth comes from UAE and also from Saudi Arabia. But I don't want to miss Qatar as well. So territory coverage is our first expansion plan in the GCC countries. Secondly, which is vital to me, is continue to leverage on the education and professionalism on the staff. Staff for me is the real most important thing to be successful. You asked me your first question and I come back again to you. It's vital to us to have the staff trained, uh, developed and engaged. 
So I will continue to invest in technical skills and uh, because these technical skills represent the information we can provide to our customers. And this is a key pillar in my strategic development in the region. Uh, we are at the moment 74 operating there. There are with the expansion plan. I think there will be 100 very, very soon. And of course, this professionalism is very high. Credit analysts, risk underwriters, commercial underwriters, capable to understand the diverse growth which is coming in the GCC countries. Not only for the local companies, but also for the companies which are requesting limits and investments and are trading everyone in the world in the GCC countries. That's why our professionalism has to be the state of the art. Obviously very exciting figures there that you've just told us about. That's wonderful to hear. And looking ahead to, to uh, future expansion plans and other regions outside of your own, what's the thoughts there? Africa is the number one, of course. So we started to set up some information agency in uh, Johannesburg in uh, South Africa. But of course we look at very uh, interesting to all the other uh, African countries. What we are trying to do also is to advise the companies and the customers that we currently have to increase their uh, trade with these African countries. I mentioned petrochemical sectors, for instance, automotive, uh, steel, food, and also IT electronics. This might be the important sectors of export to our African countries. Vice versa, commodities and natural resources. Well, certainly some very exciting information there, Massimo, and thank you for telling us about the operation. We have something exciting for you now. I'm glad to be able to say that we have a special presentation. Uh, on behalf of Global Banking and Finance, I'd like to actually welcome into the studio now uh, Nolo Leary, who's actually going to give you uh, our presentation. So that would be okay. something I think would be rather super. Good. Did you come in, Noel, here? Mr. Faccioni? Yes. Um, on behalf of Global Bank and Finance Review, I'd still like to present um, Euro Hermes Award for the fastest growing credit insurance company, Gulf Corporation Countries 2014. Thank you very much, Rolly. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you. you. And the certificate as well there for you just to, to underline wow. uh, what we've just been saying. Good. I would say that uh, firstly it's a privilege for me to take this award from uh, Global Banking and Finance Review. And I really thank you so much for giving this. I think that this uh, will be very appreciated also by the staff, which is doing extremely well in the Gulf from Euro Hermes operations. And this is also a confirmation, I think, that we are doing a good service and is appreciated by the market. So we will continue to be like this, with the award, but in an humble way. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. Congratulations. Massimo, thanks very much indeed. And thank you for being with us here today. Pleasure. Big pleasure. Thank you so much.